If you're a book lover, I get it. You love your books. But when the books are piled all over the floor and the bookshelves are full to the brim, they're spilling over, it might be time to declutter your books, free up some much needed shelf space, and it makes it a whole lot easier to dust and clean. I'm going to share with you my best decluttering tips from my two decades of organizing offices and homes. There's a couple of strategies depending on how many books you have. If you are a book lover and you have lots of books, like I'm saying over a hundred books, there's a strategy that says you have to get all of your books and bring them into one location. But I know that doesn't work for a lot of people. Books are heavy. And if you're not able to actually lift and move the books, that's not going to work. And so then you're not going to declutter your books and they're going to keep piling up. The other strategy is to go shelf by shelf, room by room. I would simply just start with this bookshelf and I typically start top to bottom and if you can't get to the top shelf you can start from the bottom but I would go shelf by shelf making decisions and I'll do that with you in a moment once you've done the shelving then you can go to the piles on the floor or if you want to start with the piles on the floor you can once you've done a particular room then you can move to the next room that you have books and I'm pretty sure you have books in more than one room in your house so if you have over 100 books, I highly recommend that you do it room by room. Now, if you have, let's say, under 100 books and you're able to lift and move the books, you could bring them all into one location and then from there you can sort them. So when you're sorting your books, you want to organize them by categories. If you have business books, fitness books, there might be history books, magazines. If you have lots of magazines like we have here, I would just gather all the magazines and stack them there. But as you're sorting through your books, decide whether you're going to keep them or you're not. There might be your maybe pile, you're not quite sure. And you want to start to see what categories you have. So a quick sort is always the best way to go. Just yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Get those into a box or on the floor and then you can sort them into the other categories. The tough question I always get is, how do I know? Like I might need that book one day and I'm like, when was the last time you referred to it? If you haven't referred to a book in the last couple of years, I think it's probably time to let it go. What I find is most difficult books are things from school, college, and university books. A lot of times textbooks are hard to donate and I know why. It's because you spend a lot of time and effort and money to get the education. If you can, take them back to the school or the university. If you can't do that, you can see if there's any libraries that will accept textbooks. A lot of times those textbooks do get outdated so you do have to do a little bit of research. One of the challenges that I see with organizing books and decluttering them is they don't leave the house or the office. So you want to make sure that you get those out as quickly as possible. Otherwise, they're going to creep back onto the shelf. My other strategy I use when I'm decluttering books is once I've done a quick sort of the particular area and I've created some categories, then maybe there's some books that I want to give to some friends and I know that those are the kind of books that they would want to read or if they're recipe books. I have a friend, she loves to bake and so I don't bake anymore and I don't do pastry. So why do I have those cookbooks? I can pass those on. I have some rules of thumb for organizing and decluttering is I designate spaces for my books. So in my office, I have one shelf for business books. And once that's full, it's time to let something go. When it's just casual reading and fitness books, I have another area for those books. When that area gets full, it's time to declutter and pass them on. Same with magazines. I have one area in our family room where once the pile doesn't fit in the magazine rack, it's time to recycle those magazines. So you can create these organizing rules of thumb for helping you to keep your books under control. Books get out of control very quickly. When you're decluttering your books, you're probably going to come across books that were handed down to you and they are family history or you may want to keep those, but let's group 
group them together or maybe pass them on to another family member that would enjoy them if there's something that you're not going to refer to anymore. Once you've categorized and figured out what books you're going to keep and not keep and you have a pile of books to donate, make sure you get them in your vehicle, you get them out the door. Now where are you going to donate them to? I have another video that you can go and look at, but quickly where you can donate your books to schools, libraries, any sort of causes that are near and dear to your heart, you can go and donate those books if they're specific to a topic. In our neighborhood, we have these little book boxes and you can donate and they go back into the community. You can go to senior centers. They have libraries. If you have books that are like a rare find and you need to consign them, then you will need to do your research to find a store that will consign the book for you. So let's start decluttering my books. Anyway, I'm gonna go through this shelf and the books on the floor and then we will decide what books are gonna be donated and what I'm gonna keep. Now that I've decluttered the bookshelf and the magazines, the pile on the floor is what I'm going to donate. I have some piles for a couple of friends and I have a recycling pile and what's left is to just quickly organize them. There's different strategies for when you're organizing your books is you could have them by category. If you want to color code them, you can do that as well. But I like to organize my books in categories. The other thing is, is you may just want to have one shelf and that shelf is designated for books you want to read. And they're new books, you haven't read them yet. And so instead of rummaging through all of your books throughout your house, you could just go to that one shelf and those are the books that you want to read. Another little tip for business books is actually schedule them out. I will buy five or six business books and sometimes I buy them for my Kindle because I'm trying to have less books in my life, but I love the feel of a book. And I will schedule it out in my calendar. Okay, I'm gonna read these four or five books and that is all scheduled out when I have my morning routine and I usually read for 10 to 20 minutes. Another tip to help you declutter your books is there is an app that you can get on your phone it's called Readwise. It's not a free app, it is paid. But when I'm reading business books or technical books, a lot of times I hang on to the books because I want to refer to the information again. So when I'm going through the books and I've been highlighting, it takes all of your highlighted notes and it saves them for you. Now if you have a Kindle, it'll do that as well, but what's really cool about this app is it will give you the ability to search and bring it up into your feed and just say, hey, this is this information, and it just refreshes it, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's great, and sometimes it's just a timely thing when I needed to hear that message or some information that I wanted to find. Another tip for when you're organizing your books is these are a product that I use. They're by Rubbermaid, and and they're clear, which is what I like because you don't see them on the shelves and they're open-ended. So you can see here, this is a nice big width and I can use binders or when I'm doing kids books, oftentimes kids books are on the top shelf of on a bookshelf or on a dresser and the books fall over. And so I will put these, you can use it this way or you can do it this way for bigger books. And the other little thing that you can do, this is my secret little tip, is you can put little clear bumpers on the bottom and it will hold it in place. I use lots of these inside of bookshelves and to hold recipe books up. And what's nice is you can use it as a bookend because I find bookends don't always work. This bookend is like a really heavy rock that I have and that will work. Or you can stack books on sides like this and this is another strategy that I use when I'm ranging books. I will have those and then I will lay some flat and it acts as a bookend. So if you want to use these, just put this in here, get some books, put them in, and it now acts as a bookend. Voila! Now magazines. Oftentimes we buy a magazine because there's one recipe we want to try or there's a couple of organizing ideas you want to implement or a great article. What I like to do is once I've read the magazine, if there's something that I really want to keep, especially if it's a recipe or maybe it's something on how to clean stains. I mean you can google a lot of this information on your phone, but what I'll do is I'll tear out the page, put it in a sheet protector, and it goes in a binder that I have for my recipes 
and then you can recycle the magazine and free up some space. So remember, when you're decluttering your books, keep the books that you love, you use, you refer to, that really make you happy. Maybe you've been through a difficult time or a transition in your life. A strategy I will use when I'm organizing my books is I'll put the books that make me smile and bring me joy, I'll put those up higher and the heavier books, I'll put them down below. This is a little trick that I use. Once you've decluttered your books, I'd like to know how many books you donated. Post that in the comments. Mm -hmm.